good, especially people that, you know, I, 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 I don't, I bet him. Ah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live once again. We are Idanjo Live, the place where classic music happens. And my goodness, are we happening tonight? We are all over Central Europe tonight. And at the end of our conversation, I have a few wonderful announcements of things happening on Idanjo in the global global concert hall. This particular series is I Dodge You Live. And if you miss it or are missing it now, which this announcement sounds ridiculous, but if you're missing it now, <laughs> you can watch it later because uh, it will be archived on I Dodge you Live. My guest tonight is one of the most wonderful colleagues and sopranos in the world today, Carmen Donatazio. We've not worked that much together, but we certainly travel in a lot of the similar circles together. It's wonderful to see you again. I hope you're well. You look behind you as if you're in one of the paradise valleys of the world. Where are you now? I, hello, hello to everybody. Hello. I'm in Palermo. I arrived only yesterday. Um, from tomorrow, I'm rehearsing Ver Directum with Teatro Massimo. And, and I'm enjoying the beautiful balcony I got here with very That's ancient beautiful. stuff all around me. <laughs> In Italy, this is very common. It's a, it, is, it, is, it, is Italy having a nice summer? Is it warm weather? Yes, it's a, a, fortunately now it's a quite fresh, a little bit windy, but during the day it's really very, very, very hot. A very hot. Very hot, especially had, uh, here I'm in Sicily. Author. I, in Sicily, I, you know, I've never been to Sicily. That's embarrassing. No, there. you're kidding. <laughs> oh my God, you must. It's you know, one I of mean, the most beautiful islands in the world and regions in Italy. It's very special. I'm a Southern woman, but when yeah. I come here, it's really very special to me as well. It's like coming into something really different, even are being you, in Italy. Were you, were you, you were actually from Sao Paulo? No, I Napoli, am actually, Napoli, sorry, yeah, Napoli. I am actually, yeah, was born not far in a, in a town not far from Naples, yeah, from Naples. From Naples. Fantastic. Yeah. And this is where you were born and raised and went to school? Yes, everything it, was, was done there. Is this where you studied music? Yes, I actually was attending the conservatoire in my hometown in Avellino, the conservatoire yeah. Domenico Cimarosa. <laughs> At the same time, because we have different faculties, I mean, there is not, uh, at that time, there was not really a, facu a musical faculty at university, I mean. So uh -huh. the, we only had conservatoire as the maximum, as the highest level for a musician. And, uh, and so at the same time, I had to attend also the university for another faculty, which was uh, Russian literature. <laughs> and so I was going mad because it was like attending two faculties at the same time and just going mad. But I, I did it. <laughs> I don't know how, but I, I did it. So where, 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 where did the voice teacher come into this? Well, actually, I, start, I was starting uh, with piano. So my, my background is as a pianist and it was the, my, my piano teacher discovering and noticing I had uh, an operatic voice because I didn't know at all. So one day while she, she went uh, in the kitchen for a coffee, I was like playing piano and singing at the same time. And she came and said, but you have a natural operatic voice already, you know, already there. And I said, are you kidding? And so what should I do? Oh, you should train your voice and go to conservatoire. And I said, but I don't like opera. I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Never say never. And without, without, without compromising the, the holy grail of Sopranos ages, about what age were you when that conversation happened? Uh, I was almost uh, between 17 and 18. Fantastic. You know, 18, see, I, I would say 18. I think, the, you know, I think this is the way kids, people should be trained. I think it would be wonderful if all, if you're musical and you train your kids, I mean, who knows whether they're going to go to music. I think every child should have some sort of music training. It's good for their brain. It's good for their soul. It's good for everything. And it, what people don't realize is that, you know, the voice really shows up a little bit later. And even 17, yeah. 18 is very young, you know, but to hear, to hear, aha, uh -huh, you know, but then you go on. It's fantastic. And so I, from, yeah, you always I, study voice. 
I agree. I agree with you because now being, you know, professional singer, I don't think when you start too young is good. Yeah. You need, yeah, you need, I mean, to be almost an adult and then studying and practicing and having coaching a lot, a lot yeah. in order, in order to be ready, let's say in, in the late twenties. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I don't you, I don't believe you know in starting a career so young when you are in the early 20s it's a little bit dangerous. I think it is very dangerous and actually that's something that that concerns me today if I may and that is that this measurement that we as professionals especially your generation my generation speak of oh that's too soon if you sing that too soon your life will be shorter you'll have a shorter career it's not good for you this kind of mentality or warning is almost non-existent in the yes. colleagues today. And yeah, I know. I know because I remember <laughs> just a couple of years ago, I, one of my partners, he was 21. And I said, oh, <laughs> 21, you can be my son. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not 20, 21, and for that role, I think it was too, too early, but, you know, exactly. every, everyone... <laughs> I, I tell you, my, my debut as Tosca was only two years ago at age 43. I'm very proud to say I am 45 because I don't feel it and I think I don't look 45. So very well, proud I'm, to say I'm my not, age. I am not proud to say my age, but I certainly don't feel it. No, you must be <laughs> proud because, because you look really gorgeous, amazing. Well, so do you, darling. Now, back to back to business. Now, Carmen, you, but in as you really started to sing a lot in your late 20s and, and early 30s, you you sang early repertoire. You sang, you sang Italian repertoire, but did you sing Baroque repertoire, bel canto? Was it uh, lighter well, material? Uh, <laughs> Baroque repertoire, I just did once uh, L'Incoronazione di Poppea. That's mm. it. And was one of the most beautiful experiences in in my right. life. I, I'd yeah. love very much to go back to their repertoire and that opera specifically, but as Ottavia this time, you know. You I, know, I, I, I sing, I sing, uh, I sing Ritorno Dulisse in two different productions. I absolutely loved it, but I so I know what you mean. But see, as you're as you're saying your development, we're only speaking about opera. You didn't do very many concerts or recitals or things like that. It's been mostly opera. Yes, it has been mostly opera. And the first part of my career was uh, mostly bel canto. I've done a lot of Rossini, Donizetti, Bellini, a lot of Cimarosa, Mozart as well. Really a lot. Then, let's say between the second part, which I'm living now, it has been more Verdi because the voice developed, you know, it yeah. became larger and louder. And, and now I'm, uh, I'm approaching, since the last two years, I'm approaching the Verismo repertoire, and I did Pagliacci, Tosca, uh, upcoming uh, engagements uh, for uh, Fedora, Andrea Chenier, oh all this kind of, yeah. Time Fedora, to... we, don't, we don't get to hear Fedora very much. That's fantastic. Yes, yeah. but this is an incredibly healthy development. That's, that's why you sing as well as you do and why you're, why you're uh, one of the most important sopranos today because you're healthy, you're strong, now you're mature and you're ready to head into this new repertoire. And you still sing with all the technique you've learned over 15 years going into the, into the, in the bigger fach. And this is exactly what, what even Verdi and Puccini wrote about, about the singers that they were looking for. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, you must be patient with this job but if I'll... you want to last uh, in in during the process. I mean, because I was asked when I was twenty seven when I won the Operalia competition, I was asked to have a debut as a Tosca. Of course, it's very flattering mm -hmm. because you are young and you think, oh. I'm really cool. I'm so good. They asking me, but at the same time, I was scared because I I knew that I my skills for that role were not enough at that age, and uh, and for a role like that now I know very well what it means. You yeah. really must you must be a prima donna. You must have a command of the stage. Otherwise, the stage is is killing you. Well put. Trust me. Well, you trust <clears throat> me, <laughs> of course. 
Yeah, no, it's absolutely. What was it, Traviata that we did at the Met? Yeah, right? we did actually. That was my goodbye to the role because it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> Hey, Traviata is one of those wonderful roles, but it does have a shelf life, doesn't it? Oh, yes. It was very, uh, you know, stressful because the voice at that time was already, you know, changing. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy because probably that was my best uh, Traviata oh, uh, among all the Traviatas I did when I was very young. So well, um, it was a very, a very, a very good goodbye. It was a, it was a probably an unusual production for him. I, I rather like I got used to the production, but it was, I mean, I, it was the production we did in in Salzburg in in uh, in two thousand five. But yeah, yeah, because you was, you were the first. Evening. It was a wonderful wonderful evenings, and so has most of your career been in Italy or Central Europe or where have you been? Well, I I I, ca I can say that uh, especially in the first ten years of my career, I've really sound very little in Italy. I'm more a British product, I would oh, say. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was right. discovered by British people and not by Italians, by the way. You have, yeah, you have a lot of you have a lot of repertoire at Covent Garden, don't you? Yes, yes. It's one of my beloved theaters and um, I, I lived for many years in London and uh, and it's a special oh. place to me, to my heart. Yeah, I've spent lots of years there. Did you ever sing in any of the other opera companies in 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 London and in uh, England? Like uh, in no, Island? not in the no, not in the opera companies. But I've done lots of concerts with uh -huh. uh, almost the the most part of um, orchestras, like uh -huh. the the Royal Philharmonic, London right. Symphony, London Philharmonic, oh. um, and recorded a lot with Opera Rara this rare operas like Caterina Cornaro and yeah. Hermione Pirata. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> so <laughs> difficult. Uh, Parisina. Ooh. So is it, what balance between new roles and and standard repertoire? Since you've you've given you you've 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 been changing repertoire, what do you consider now your standard repertoire and what are the most maybe challenging or exciting things that you're taking on in the next three or four years? I read your biography, but I want you to say it. Yeah, so- uh, Your website's delicious. It's wonderful. <laughs> I wonder yeah. who made that. <laughs> so, um, well, of course, I've, you know, left behind the bel canto repertoire. Yeah. Uh, but still keeping to, uh, still keeping uh, Norma because I like so much that. Uh, but I, I don't know how for how many years I can you know keep it in, into <laughs> into the suitcase. I don't know. Uh, but I'm I'm very happy uh, with uh, Verdi. I'm I'm having my next debuts are uh, Aida. Uh, I sang last year Ballo in Maschera. Ah. And I'm starting with this uh, Virismo repertoire, as I, I told you before, um, uh, Andrea Chenier, uh, Fedora, and uh, Adriana Licouvreur, all this kind of uh, task, of course, and, uh, and I feel very comfortable with, with this music. It's really... What's the, most difficult, what's the most difficult role you have done? Probably Norma. I think it's the most it difficult. It is very challenging, isn't it? Yeah, it's even, it's even still. Is it more challenging than? Uh, yes, it is. It is more Vira challenging. And, and, and yeah, Mar yeah, it's more challenging because when you start with another repertoire like the Verismo repertoire, also, even if the technique is always the same, you know, same support and same facial mask, um, yeah. but. Um, the weight um, is different. I don't know how to explain, no, no. but you know that is a very, very high tessitura, very high fach, and uh, and it's quite difficult when you start with another repertoire. It's like you 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 want to go back. You are now a uh, size, I don't know four, and you want to go in a size one, two, whatever. I don't know the American size. Uh, <laughs> So it's a little bit. 
No, it's a perfect analogy. It's a perfect analogy. <laughs> it's exactly that. I remember I remember having a conversation with Lucia Pop because she was sort of the quintessential Susanna, and then she became Fiorelligi and Contessa. And and I remember her saying, you know, this is it's like it's like putting your sister's dress down and putting your mother's dress on, and, yeah. and you have to. Yeah. It's not easy. It doesn't. You don't just grow from Susanna to to Contessa, and you don't just grow from Belcanto to to Puccini Averdi. You have to you have to let it go. But what is so what's so exciting about your singing is that is that, and 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 I hope everybody goes on. We'll look a little bit on the Adagio app uh, to some of the recordings. Is to hear is to one hears in this full singing the the bel canto the lyric behind it and this this is very beautiful because it gives you a far greater palette of colors and expressions but one trusts the health of your voice we one never feels like you're you're going to scare us because it's going to be crazy well after 20 years because this year i celebrated uh, you know 20 years of career and singing not really you know the easiest <laughs> roles and I'm still here, so I'm very glad. I said, okay. Oh, you're more, than, you're to... more than still here. But yeah. look, this is a wonderful conversation about singing and music, but I know that you have an awful lot of other interests. And um, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about this Puccini concert in, in Lerici is with the Lerici yes. Festival. And it's a, it's a total Puccini evening, isn't it? Yes, it and is. Now, if I understand, part of, part of the mission of Le, uh, Le Ricci Festival, which looks delicious and wonderful, is, of course, Italian culture. But this year, isn't it Puccini's, is it his 100th birthday or 100th death day? It's a, it's a big, it's a centenary of, of Puccini this year. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, not prepared yeah, for I this. Think, I think I <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't remember. No, 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 we were going to do a... We, which not kind of anniversary is this year? I, th I think Puccini and Leha are born in the same year because I was going to do a concert in Austria celebrating Puccini and Leha, but it never came never came to pass. But what I was going to say in school, you said you studied Russian literature. Now, uh, this might be a fun a fun. How many languages do you speak? I speak uh, Napolitan, which is my first language. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is different than Italian. This is like it I mean, is indeed, indeed, and different. also, yeah, it's completely another language. And um, it's very funny here in uh, in Sicily. I can understand them because the the roots of the language are the same, but uh, pronunciation is completely different. And but sometimes I was in the market today, Ballarò, which is very close to the hotel, and um, and I was, you know, like trying to understand but some of them was really like arabic for me when you speak do they know that you're from naples or they yes, just know you're course, italian first of all we all we are 20 regions and every region has its own accent so you you can understand it's it's not like in english the british accent where like the bbc english accent where you just you don't know if you are from Surrey or Scotland or whatever. Um, instead, in Italy, every region has its own accent. So I can tell you if somebody is at least from the north or the south. Um, All right. I think me too. I still <laughs> keep a tiny bit of southern accent and I don't mind. I, I like it. Uh, so my very first language and I speak in Napolitan with my family, especially with my brother. We speak only Napolitan, then of course Italian, <laughs> <I love it. laughs> to be understood. Uh, Spanish, French, English, Russian, and I'm starting with a bit of German because I'd love very much to, to sing some German stuff. But if I don't understand what I am saying, forget I sing it. Now, because for me, it, can, can you speak Latin? Latin, uh, it's when I when I was a student, yes, I could, right. but I don't because you know you lose. This is like a very ancient language, and if you don't practice, no, you you lose it because it's all about yeah. grammar and translations at school. It's really completely different, yeah. Uh, yes, but you will it, find you will, you will find some you'll find some relief studying German, the structure of German, because of your Latin background. That will help. 
a little. Uh, but also Russian, because Russian is oh, based oh. on cases like uh, like German. So let's say the structure of the grammar is can be similar, but German, uh, for what I can say at the moment, because I took like eight lessons, it's the most difficult languages among those I mentioned to you. Oh, really? Oh, it's German. Funny. German can be can German can be amazingly tedious because of all these different files. And and quite frankly, you get some of them in your ear. I I know them probably more by ear than I know by by actual study. So it, it is it is possible. But the, your your Russian. I'm curious about that. Did you study Russian in school when you were studying mm -hmm. literature? No, I studied uh, um, at university. So actually, I I have a degree in Lus in Russian literature um, because I didn't know what was happening, you know, with singing. If I, you know, could leave uh, with with singing, uh, yeah. so also my my parents were quite tough and say, okay, maybe singing is a hobby, but you should, you know, have a real degree and become a professor or whatever. So after my uh, degree at the university, uh, after the graduation has a, high, how do you say, graduation? Yes, yeah, graduation. actually I am, actually I am a professor of uh, Russian literature. Fantastic. And I won a scholarship as a, after the graduation as a, um, as a young professor. So I had to go to Odessa uh, for research in my field, which was uh, ancient Slavic language. And uh, by that time, I, I met Leila Genscher and okay. she said, but what professor university in Odessa? You must come to La Scala. You must have this audition with Maestro Muti and so, and the rest is story. So I did a... I didn't realize you had that connection to her. She must have been an amazing woman. She was indeed very tough. Yeah. Quite did hard. You, did you with her? What? Did you study with her? I did, but it was like love and fight at the same time. <laughs> well, lots yeah. of laughs and lots of crying and tears. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. But oh, dear. Uh, I miss her very much. I really yeah. miss her. There are moments in which I are difficult for me, you know, to be on stage. Maybe I'm sick and I, I don't feel well. And I just look, you know, up on the heaven and I say, okay, Leila, tonight I need your help. Come with me on stage <laughs> and do half of the job. <laughs> have, you ever, have, you, have, you, have you been to Turkey? I've never been. Only, you know, at the airport. Yeah, but as a as a as a Leila Gentra protege, you really. We, we I would love very. I would love very much. I, I really, it's one of the places where I want to go. I was invited once to be on the the. There's a Leila Gentra uh, competition. competition, and and I was invited to be on the jury, and I don't do juries at all, but. <laughs> I was in. I was deeply um, honored to have been asked. I mean, she's. I never met her, of course, but just an amazing human being. Have you know with all this Russian, with all this Russian stuff? What about the Russian vocal literature? What about singing in Russia? Finally, uh, if this COVID will allow us to go uh, yeah. back to normal life, uh, I will have my debut in December as uh, Tatiana in uh, Evgeny Negin. Oh, fantastic! Finally, and then after Good that, news. we are expecting, uh, I don't know, maybe Pichavaya uh, Dama or yeah. other, other operas. So I'm very excited. Have you to... sung, have you sung uh, Tatiana often on Yigi? Never, never. It will be my first time. Oh, my. I've never, 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 never. So be for it. fi it's finally, so yeah, finally, I have this big occasion to show my Russia. Yes, I mean, I, I mean, looking at your at your at your website, looking at your schedule, I, I had exactly this thought. I looked and I said, "My God, you know, if COVID doesn't relax all these wonderful plans, I mean, you're so busy with so many wonderful places, but it is completely dependent upon uh, upon travel and quarantine and planning." Tell me, where did you spend? Where did you spend what I call our Corona sabbatical? Oh, uh, well. 
it's very frustrating because we have such um, uh, such an exciting life and we never stop and we are always you know into the next project and uh, and having you know your coaching lessons and focusing on what you're doing at the moment but also you know on the next step and which can be yes exciting but at the same time i took time during this corona also to relax to relax and give a little bit more importance to real life sometimes we don't realize but not only for us for singers just i mean with mankind because we rush 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 and sometimes i ask to myself why do we rush why are we rushing to to go where to do what why is so necessary and important this sense of rushing you know never stopping so mentally it was very good for me to have this long rest because i was uh, having fun with my family i i was spending more time with them i was you know rediscovering things in in, in my home you know, pictures and teaching piano to my niece, Fiorella. Uh, yeah, we, we had time enough to teach piano, you know, and, uh, and sing and sing and play piano together and cook and stay with my brother and experimenting new recipes, you know. Um, so it has I'm been a good, a good time for me because I spent it not alone, fortunately, but with all my family. But now... You know, it's frustrating because you need being being an artist, being a singer. We are also like athletes, and we need you know to have performances with a, an audience because the feeling and you know the body is completely different uh, from when you you know rehearse oh. at home. Yeah. Um, so I I hope it's time to go back into normal life and make our job. I, th I think normal, <clears throat> if, if normal means actually performing again, then I think that will come about. But I, I mean, normal as in where we were last December, I think is going to be a very long time and maybe never quite the same. But that's another conversation. The um, and what you've said is is so true for so many people as well as artists. I, I just yeah, I hope everybody's listening because it's it has been a healthy break in some ways and very tough but but we're all really ready to go back and be who we are and do what we believe that we've been been born to do now the in 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 your all your different interests you're very passionate about uh italian culture i don't is that true yes yeah which is good. It is a very what kind of and and you're you you have several different endorsements of, of very you know from Bulgari and I, I forget the other. I'm not I'm not quite a quadrua person. But <clears throat> are these ambassadorships? Do you do? Are you able to 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 do a public reach out or diplomatic activities of some sort? And I, I heard a rumor you rather are quite interested in diplomacy or diplomatic search, which is very yeah, sympathetic to me. That yes, was actually that's what, I'm what I would love. I would love when I give up as a singer. <laughs> I would love very much, you know, to, yes, <laughs> to be not into really into politic, uh, but really being ambassador, I don't know, maybe for UNESCO. Uh -huh. I'd love very much. You, so would you like to be the, the Italian ambassador to London? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think, you know, uh, it's too late for a kind of uh, career like that because it's very intense and, uh, and you must study a lot to, yeah, to achieve at that position, especially in some specific countries like America, UK or Russia. Yeah, yes, so it's true. too late. But being ambassador uh, like for UNESCO or, or other... You know, associations. I, I, I'd, I'd be very honored, and I'd like very much to. Was was COVID very intense in Napoli, like it was in northern Italy? No, no, it, and we are very lucky because uh, 
the most part of South was not that touched by Corona and the cases we got, they came from Milano or from abroad. Uh, if you think there are regions in South uh, like um, Lucania, Basilicata, they had, I think, three cases or in Calabria as well, very, very few cases. Great. Campania, the region where I come from, of course, uh, we had more cases because it's, uh, it's a big region with Napoli, which has, I don't know, five millions of uh, inhabitants. So, of course, uh, the percentage of cases was higher, but um, the hospital, uh, Cotugno, was an example for the entire world because none of uh, their uh, doctors or nurses working there was infected. No, That's incredible. Amazing. It's amazing. This is a specific hospital for uh, they they are um, specific for uh, infections, wow. so they are used in working with yeah, yeah. you know diseases like like this. Yeah. And uh, and I knew because I was you know watching TV and reading a lot of newspapers and uh, in internet of course and I got all this news that uh, old countries around the world they were calling daily the hospital to know you know the rules they they were having at the hospital and the routine and uh, and actually. It was discovered in that theater, you know, the best medicament at the moment to fight against the corona, which are not antibiotics or uh, the aspirin, paracetamol or whatever, but it's, um, oh, I don't know the, the medical term for this, but it's like tr thrombosis. It's uh, whatever, a stroke, stroke. When you get a stroke. stroke, yeah. So basically, that w that's what happens with uh, with the corona. It's uh, provoking like a stroke, and uh, and so they were using a doctor was the first there to understand that a medicament for the stroke uh, was working very well with the corona. So I hope that very soon we will have the the right uh, medicaments and. Uh, and maybe the well, yeah. yeah. It sounds like it sounds like there has been some some breakthroughs across the world for at least medic medicines that will that will ease the the drama of the COVID uh, uh, virus. Uh, I don't think it can prevent death yet, and and they're certainly going to a long ways from vaccine, but. But I th it is curious to, to hear, as you're describing, the different realizations of what COVID, where it comes from, or what it has done. What concerns me a lot is, and, and it doesn't get talked about very much, is, is apparently the lasting effects. Very often, people have very serious uh, lung problems, or even stroke problems, brain problems. You know, this 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 pandemic, this COVID virus, is very very brutal even if you don't die from it you can have a very significantly altered life from it which i find very frightening and, and disturbing especially when you see how many people across the world are infected whether they actually manifested or not is another question it's it's a it's a terrible time and, and it has i think reoriented uh, so much of all of our mentalities of of our values of life or our values of time uh, it's certainly you know as you said as a singer as an artist it's very important but let's go back to Italian culture. I mean, this is um, this interests me. If do you feel that because we think as non-Italians that well, I mean, everybody thinks in the world they know the other languages and other not languages but cultures. But something about Italian culture, everybody wants to feel they have something that's Italian in, in them somehow. Uh, whether it's, you know, the music they're playing, why they make bad spaghetti or <laughs> whatever else. By the way, I wanted to say earlier, you have a very, I don't know if you, you have a very secret reputation of, of being an extraordinary cook. Ah, I know uh, the hey, little uh, bird who told you. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I must, I must say, I, I, I not only want to sing with you again, but I, I really want to be invited over for dinner. <laughs> oh, what a big pleasure. Let's let's do this big meeting, uh, big feast. Exactly. Uh, 
But what I is it about what is it about a co- Italian culture? When you say Italian culture represented, things Italian is it the language? Is it the literature? Is it the archaeology? Is it the is it? Do you feel that there's a superficial relationship that the world has to to the essence of what real Italy is and real Italian? Uh, what does all that mean for us? What should we know? No, sometimes yeah. Uh, being Italian, I f- I feel that uh, foreigners they have. Uh, a little bit a more superficial uh, yeah. opinion of, of us. It's all about ah, pizza, spaghetti, mandolin. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not pizza, spaghetti, mandolin, of course. Yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, I think we are really a great a great country. And also, I want to spend more time on about uh, you know the um, the medical uh, system care. Oh which we were talking about. Uh, we are, basically, we are not a capitalist country. We still have, you know, the idea, the ide- ideology is, a, is like a socialist, let's say. We are for the social, we are for the citizens. And I think we've shown this during this COVID because uh, if we think about UK, for instance, no, and when Boris Johnson came, you know, with his first speech, and then we <laughs> we know what happened, and say, oh, many people they will die, but we cannot, you know, stop economy and blah 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 blah. blah. Okay, fine. Uh, we didn't do that since the very first, and we were pointed again from a British doctor who is into the uh, like uh, TV program about surgery, aesthetical surgery, whatever. I don't remember his name. (laughs) One thing else and say, oh, because Italians, this is another uh, idea uh, from, you know, foreigners about Italian. Oh, they're lazy. They don't want to work. They want to have siesta. So this story of the COVID and being closed and locked down, is uh, like an excuse, you know, to don't go to 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 work or uh, stay at home, and but mm-hmm. it's not like this. Uh, I'm very proud of Italian uh, care system because we really, and also, I mean, uh, we all have, I think, around the world problems with the government. Let's say, <laughs> let's say this. Uh, so every every country has problem with the prime minister or whatever, sure. Sure. Or, or president or whatever. Okay, but I liked very much what my country did uh, because really gave importance to the citizen, to the human being, to save lives mm. and not and not economy. I know it's a disaster because we will pay the. Uh, you know, the, the, we will pay the bill. Um, a lot of us we will pay the bill because I, I am trying to be optimistic and thinking that, you know, very soon life is going back to, you know, normality. But this is a wish. I am very rational. And I think that the probably the worst is still to come. I'm I, a little I bit, I'm a little bit, I'm worried. Well, I'm, I, I, God forbid, and, and this is a bit wider than our provider, although this is one of the wonderful things about having this hour with a colleague is just talking about anything, have a glass of wine and, and talk about life. We don't know each other so well, so it's, it's wonderful to get to know you and, and hear your ideas. And I know people are very interested in hearing that. I think it is an aspect of this, of this, of this crisis, this pandemic that has very much thrown up in everybody's eyes exactly what you've just said. This, this essentially two different philosophies of how you look at the world, um, if not three or four in, the, in between. But this idea of, is it the people first or is it the government? Is it the numbers? Is it the economy? Is it the health itself? And, and, and also more to the point, um, as you know, Italy was in the news so, so hard at, in March and April for all of these, you know, this, this unstoppable death toll that just kept rising and, and the catastrophe. And, and what you've just described is, is something that across Central Europe can be actually praised. Uh, and that in that the social mindedness, if not direct socialistic based 
capitalistic economies or social democracies, if you want to call them, are still about people first. And I think that's an incredibly important statement that you've made. What, what concerns me is, is now that they're quote unquote opening up, everybody's talking about reopening the societies and reopening the economies. And, and so they're identifying the most important things, you know, and survival and, 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 and food and jobs. And these are all very important, but how long do people talk like this until they say something about the arts, until they say something about education, until they say something about the things that feed our souls and our families and continue us as human beings. It, and it's all measured on these other things. And this, I agree with you completely. I, I think this might be a time for us to rethink uh, uh, both sides. But I, I agree with you. I think certainly the economic side of this disaster is yet is going to get much worse before it gets any better. Yes, because if we uh, are going to be locked down again in October, that's what we think it's going to be really a disaster because the first, you know, uh, kick we could like survive. The second, I, I don't know, because yeah. there, there are so many people involved also in our, in our business or in, in cinema, in art, I mean, and, uh, and uh, maybe they, they don't have a, a specific, let's say, uh, a job and they, they live like they daily, like they have a daily fee and yeah. stopping, they don't receive anything. Yeah. And it's a big problem, you know, even to oh. go to the supermarket. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, artists in general, uh, people, they think, oh, but they rich and they, you know, they're wealthy. They don't need, even even if they don't go to work, it's fine. No, it's not like this because there are like the makeup artists, the, exactly. the hairstylist, whatever, yes. the, the, you know, the dresser, you know, all these people that they don't perceive such a big fee and it's basically daily. So what is about them? I'm very concerned about them and uh, I'm also not scared about, you know, not being able anymore to, to sing because I'm, um, I'm a strong woman and, and I, I will invent something, you know, to say, okay, I cannot be an artist anymore. Let's do something. We have to, you know, to uh, work the, the, the land I, I will, and make potatoes. I will do it. I have no problems. I'm, I'm not in despair for this. I know that I'm strong enough to, you know, to restart from yeah. nothing, from zero, because it's a global thing. What can we do? I mean, I don't Make care sense. about having, you know, my diamonds for you, whatever. No. So I'm, I'm already mentally prepared for this, really for the worst. Like, it's a war. This is like a war. This is like second, first world war were against uh, an invisible enemy. Um, so what can we do? I you're, mean, you're inspiring, Carmen. I hope you get many <laughs> chances to speak to people. They need to hear. They need to hear someone as articulate as you, as talented as you, with exactly these perspectives. Because this is the life that we live in, and I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, yeah. It's just. So, Let's go to a happier subject. Let's talk about Le Ricci a little bit more. It's going to be all Puccini. It's uh, your the conductor is your very good Giancarlo. Giancarlo, please correct Gianluca. me. Is Gianluca, Gianluca Marciano. Gianluca Marciano. Ah, exactly. He's a very talented conductor, Italian conductor, who I met uh, many years ago uh, during a dinner, yeah. and then we had chance to work together. And in one week. Only in one week, he was able to make me have a debut as Norma. Because I was scared. I said, no, Gianluca, I cannot do this with you because I have <laughs> only <laughs> one week, <laughs> you know? So uh, I'm, I'm afraid I cannot do it with you. Uh, it was concert version. And he said, okay, let's have, do, do you think it's impossible? I said, yes, because it's only one week. Well. I was working so hard with him because he's such a good coach, such a good pianist. And yeah. we were working like seven hours per day in Lebanon, uh, where I had my, my debut in a concert version of Norma. 
and he put me in uh you know in in a form to to be able to sing the role to have the uh, the build that then a few months later i sang uh, on stage in uh, in beijing that was my stage debut as uh, as norma but i have to thank him so much for doing this and also um because we are so good friends he came to visit me uh, and uh, and we were working for a week or so to really go deeply into at this time but i i knew the score <laughs> <laughs> but we really were working, you know, on the little details for Tosca uh, before my San Francisco debut. And so I'm very grateful uh, to him also privately uh, as, as friends. And then he has such a, a good taste for the Italian repertoire and mm -hmm. uh, he breathes with you and uh, in a company so so well so it's really a pleasure to make music uh with him. the lerici festival is not so old is it Did no it's it's, it's a very it's very young i i think this is the third edition oh my god it's, it's <laughs> very very young but it's a, such an iconic place where uh shelley and lord byron uh were there spending their time in, in italy and uh and um, and they also were, you know, writing a lot during that time, composing so many, mm. you know, poems. <laughs> and, and that's why uh, Lerici uh, is called Lerici with the uh, Gulf, uh, Gulf yeah. of the, the Bay, yeah. the, Bay Gulf. the Gulf of Poets. Yeah. Uh, of poetry, exactly. Golfo, il Golfo dei Poeti. Il il Golfo Golfo dei poeti. poeti. Yeah, because all this romantic, uh, you know, poets were living for a while there. And, and your concert is August 3, is that not right? Yes, it's August 3, and uh, I will be share uh, the, the evening with a young tenor, also coming from Napoli region, uh, Vincenzo, Vincenzo Costanzo. What? But not, not, not your son. He's not so young to be your son. Oh, well, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you get used very, to it. I, I promise very, you. Very, very biological. Okay, let's say too much young for being mother of this guy. But biologically, I could. Let's say. Wow. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you could be my daughter. Okay, fine. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> done, no, but done, it's going to be a done. all Puccini evening scenes and so forth, and it's on August three, and it is also um it, it this is of and ladies and gentlemen this is an Idajo global concert hall event on August three. You can get a digital ticket for it. Just go to idajo.com and have a look. It's really quite. I I think this whole Idajo. Uh, global concert hall is what I call the third rail of performance because it is for people who are there. It's it's the analog people, it's people on online, the digital people, and the event is produced for both. It's not just an uh, just a picture, and there will be there will be conversations. You will be having conversations with people. There'll be some interaction. The global concert hall is is a wonderful platform where people of their own resources can simply have a much wider public. And I, I find it a very exciting project. And if I may, you know, I mean, it's just taking off like crazy. If you can imagine tonight, I think it is. Let me, I want to get my facts completely straight here. Tonight at 8 p.m. tonight, after this, uh, in 10 minutes, you can still get a ticket for it, is the Beethoven Triple Concerto with the Freiburger Baroque Orchestra and Pablo Heras Casado. Ah, yes. This Jean Cuieras and Alexander Melnikov, which should be exciting and very exciting is tomorrow night is Yo-Yo Ma in a tribute to Enzo Marconi, uh, Mar I want to say Marconi, Marconi, is that how you say his name? The, the film composer. Ah, Morricone, Morricone. Morricone, excuse me. Morricone, so Yo-Yo Ma, and he is going to be, be careful, He's, this is 8 p.m. Boston time, so it's a bit late for us here in, in Europe, but it is online for 24 hours, which yes, is so really quite exciting. To... And then it's gone. It doesn't stay. It's not like Medici. It doesn't stay in a catalog. It's gone. 24 hours and it's gone. So uh, I think the Idadro, the Idadro platform is getting very exciting. And if I understand correctly, Lerici is also a partner with Opera for Peace, which I believe you're also involved in, aren't you? No, I am not. 
Uh, Opera for Peace is a is a essentially a network of supporting young musicians and classical musicians for for spreading the arts and and in master classes and mentoring and so forth. It's a wonderful project. So there are a lot of things happening, as you say, you know, not being afraid not to work. I think we have to be I think we will work. I think we will work a lot, but I think we have to be not afraid to reinvent the world of classical music. And, and reinvent the access points for everyone to know how important and how fulfilling the world of classical music is to individual lives. Uh, and this is what I find so exciting about the various Idajo projects. And it's wonderful that you're participating in it. It's wonderful we have this conversation. You have a big rehearsal tomorrow morning? Yes, I have. Oh, but it's Very just big requiem. morning and evening. <laughs> are, you, are you one of those singers that's very careful about how much you talk? Uh, sometimes when I have very tough rehearsals, so concentrated like now, yes, yes. Uh, because tomorrow it's like a double rehearsal, very early in the morning and uh, at 10 and then very late in the night till uh, 11, 30 in the night. So it's going, it's going to be, you know, it's overcharging your instrument. Yeah. But usually, usually, no, I, I am very, you know, calm and I like also to go for dinner or drink something and no because we also must leave we are performance performers and we we must have a responsibility to to give a, a good performance to our audience but we also are human beings so I don't want to be in the, in a convent for the rest of my life I'm sorry <laughs> That is a wonderful way to end this great conversation. You won't be in a convent ever. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's wonderful to get to know you. It's we, we didn't, ladies and gentlemen, we, we didn't get to the to the Idajo app, but please just go have a look at all the recordings of Carmen on Idajo already on streaming and enjoy them. And you can drop the needle where you'd like or listen to the whole thing. The Idajo streaming platform is quite is quite fun. iPhone, iPad, Android, computer, whatever you need. Uh, just, I will be there for the Puccini concert. I might even write you a note and see if you actually come to the green room, which you have to come to the green room. Anyway, okay. anyway thank you for your, I'm thank you for your time. Thank you very much for sharing all of this with us and best of luck. Thank you. 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 Thank